start. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, well, one of the things that really impacted me, um, and my wife, uh, you know, witness to this. Uh, one of the things that you, you spoke about was uh, you talked about LeBron James and his commitment and perseverance and faith to get where he, he's gotten today. Uh, but one thing, you know, being from Ohio, we, you know, we had the opportunity to meet LeBron James and his family, you know, on several occasions. Uh, one thing, and I want to say this to a lot of the single mothers, if you think about it, it wasn't just LeBron James, but think about Gloria James, his mother, and her level of commitment to her son, and seeing, you know, looking into his future, and knowing that this guy, so he's going to be about something. You know, she had, a, you know, kind of a hard life, you know, uh, raising uh, a young man on her own in Akron, Ohio, uh, and blessed in, you know, the greatest financial, you know, situation. Right. But again, you know, she invested in her son. You know, I remember, you know, some of the games when he was in high school. Um, she used to pass out, you know, shirts, LeBron James shirts in high school. So right there, it, it let us know that, you know, you have to, not only in yourself, but you invest in your kids and know that, you know, you know with, with faith and commitment and just persevere, no matter what you're going through, just keep your faith in God and, you know, he's going to see the end. Right. So that's what I'm going to do. Well, what I gained from the series was faith in going through. No matter what you go through, hold on to your faith. No matter how far your back is against the wall, hold on to your faith. When you can't see, and when you don't think it is possible, on that day when you decide to give up, God is going to send you a phone call, a message, something that says, go on for me, because I got your back. Hold on to your faith. 2012, 2013 have been some trying years for me so far. But guess what I'm doing? I'm holding on to my feet. Because I'm finding myself in places that I would not have been. But I'm there because I'm holding on to my faith. And I'm going to walk with God. And I'm going to challenge Him. Whatever you tell me to do, I'm going to do it. Because I know at the end of the road, if I hold on to you and hold on to my faith, I can only have victory. have to hold on to your faith, but I pulled up one of the points um, that I took notes on, and the one thing you said was put God in front of you, and sometimes we like to jump ahead of God and act like he needs help. He don't need any help from us. He has it. He has it all together. He knows exactly what you're going through at all times, and if you just put him first and, uh, and, and keep your face set as a flint on him and not look you know, from side to side, don't, look, don't pay attention to the distractions in life. There's no way you can go wrong. And uh, you also said, never let life's problems take your joy away. Second um, Corinthians 5 and 7 says, for well, we walk by faith and not by sight. So we cannot look left, we cannot look right. Uh, Peter didn't start to sink until he thought of the problems. So we need to just keep our, our, our faith uh, alive. We have to keep on keep on trusting and believing in God. Yes. Good morning, Good morning. Good morning. Our faith is like a walk, it's like a race. There's no time to be distracted. God has a plan for the naysayers in your life. There's people who there are dream killers in your life that's trying to stop you from moving forward. And finish what you started. Finish what you started. What happened to you when you walked through this faith walk? I've been married to my wife for three years, and we've been going through ups and downs. And I know been in this church for a long time, Bishop. I have enough faith in me to move forward instead of backwards. I have enough faith in me to know that God is my, is my pilot. He's moved me forward. He's taken me to the next level of my life. And what... Uh, what she was saying in 2 Corinthians 5 and 7, stay encouraged, walk by faith and not by sight. When, when we walk by faith with confidence in God, His promises, it is impossible to be discouraged. If we walk by, if we walk by sight and we trust our senses and our feelings and our understanding, 
we fall, we fall prey to the deceptions of the world, the flesh, and the devil. Now, let me ask you guys this. Has there ever been a time in your life when you doubted God? And if so, how did you get back on track? Can you? I was in question. <laughs> there was a time, you know there's a time when you're going through, you know, you're going to church, you're tithing, um, you're praying, and you're trusting God, but you just feel that you're alone. You feel that he's not there. And you see other people who's being blessed. You see other people, people who are not doing right. <laughs>
She could have fell out right back there in the sanctuary and somebody would have thought she had fainted. And we could have laid her to rest on yesterday. But God said no. And no one who said no because I walk in faith. Because I come on my family. From the north, the south, to the east, to the west. Every time I come on my family, God protect me. Put a hand around the God. God bless me. Let me walk like I need to walk. Let me talk like I need to talk. The race is not easy. But I'm going to finish it strong. Tremendous testimony of their 
faithfulness to God, decided to serve God, got married. I mean, they could decide to, you know what, let's just live our lives as girlfriend and boyfriends, you know, hanging out without sealing the deal. But marriage is honorable, the Bible says. Yes, amen. And they stepped into that honorable position, and Lord did say to the test, he tried. What would make these people 